Hello and welcome back to another TLC Tutoring Company Accounting lesson. Um, in uh, my prior video, we went over income allocation with a net income. Now, this example here is exactly the same, except in this case, we do not have net income, we have a net loss. So if you are trying to get some examples on how to deal with net income, please be sure to see the prior video. I'll include a link to that in the description below. Um, but for here, if you are trying to figure out how to allocate a net loss, this is the right video for you. So let's start taking a look at some of these scenarios just to kind of run through each one. Now remember, again, we have the same partnership with two partners, Garcia and Harris. Um, in this case, uh, Garcia had originally invested 50000 while Harris had invested 70000 And Garcia works for the partnership full-time, while Harris works for the partnership part-time. So let's take a look at all of these different profit and loss sharing agreements. Um, remember, these are separate scenarios. So how would this $10,000 loss be uh, allocated if? And we'll look at each one individually. So let's start with A. In this case, it says that there is no agreement regarding the share of profits. So in this case, this $10,000 loss is going to be allocated equally. Remember, no agreement equals equally. So Garcia is going to take on $5,000 of that net loss, and Harris is going to take on $5,000 of that net loss. And remember, let's do the same thing we did in our prior video. Let's make sure to check our work at the end. So negative 5,000 and negative 5,000 means that we have negative 10,000, which equals our $10,000 net loss from before. So we're good there. Now let's talk about the journal entry because the journal entry is actually a little different when we have a net loss. Um, keep in mind, in this case, when we had net income, we would debit the income summary account. And again, this might differ depending on what textbook you're using. It might work a little bit differently. But in this case, assuming that your textbook uses the income summary account, whenever you have a net loss, you wouldn't be debiting income summary, you would be crediting it. And the same flip is going to occur for our two capital partners as well here. Garcia, notice that Garcia's capital is going down by $5,000. Now, how do we make a capital account go down with a debit or a credit? Well, capital decreases with a debit. So Garcia's capital needs to be debited for $5,000. And Harris's capital also has to be debited for that $5,000. And then in this case, our income summary is going to be a credit for that $10,000 net loss. All right, now let's take a look at B. In this case, we are dividing the net loss according to the time that each partner devotes to the business. So according to the area above, Garcia works full-time and Harris works part-time. Now again, one of the easiest ways of dealing with this is thinking of it as it relates to hours worked in a week and then put that in ratio form. So full-timers, typically it's considered that full-time work week is 40 hours while part-time is considered to be 20 hours. So we have a total of 60 hours there. So we have 60 parts. So Garcia is going to get 40 of the 60 parts of that allocation and Harris is going to get 20 of the 60 parts of that allocation. Now we might run into a rounding issue here. So I'm just going to round to the nearest cent in this case. So let's deal with our fractions first and then we'll deal with the rounding. So Garcia works 40 of the total 60 hours that the partners work. So he is going to get 40 of the 60 pieces. Make that a negative. I'm going to push that out a little. There we go. So Garcia is going to get $6,666.67. Similar thing with Harris, except this time Harris is working 20 of the total 60 hours. There we go. And let's do that to cents, just like I promised. So Harris is going to get $3,333.33 of that allocation. Let's make sure that these equal out. $10,000 and we equal our net loss. So again, just like we did before, 
Garcia Capital is going to have to go down by $6,666.67. There we go. Harris Capital is also going to be going down, but this time for $3,333.33. I have a feeling I'm going to have to round that one as well. There we go. And income summary, assuming your textbook uses income summary for the closing process, is going to be going down by that full $10,000. All right, now let's take a look at C. Now, according to C, we have a few different steps. 10% on original investments and then any remainders divided equally. So let's deal with that 10% on original investments. So originally, Garcia invested $50,000, so he is going to be getting 10% of that $50,000, so Garcia will be getting $5,000, while Harris will be getting $7,000 of his original investment of $70,000. So, so far, we have allocated a total of $12,000, $5,000 plus $7,000. So just like we did in the original video, don't let this throw you off when you have some negatives. So we originally had negative $10,000 and we allocated 12,000, which means that we have a remainder of $22,000 negative. And according to C, this negative 22,000 is going to be allocated equally. So since we have two partners, divide that by two. So Garcia is going to absorb $11,000 of that lost remainder, or basically of the remainder. And Harris is also going to be absorbing 11,000 of that. So remember, since we have multiple steps, we still have to do a little bit more math before we're done. So we have 5,000 minus 11,000. So Garcia is going to be absorbing $6,000 of the loss while Harris is going to be absorbing $4,000 of the loss. So now let's do that final check. 6,000 negative plus 4,000 negative does in fact equal 10,000 negative, and that equals out to our net loss of 10,000. So let's do that journal entry again. Garcia's capital is going down by $6,000, debit to decrease those capital accounts. Harris's capital is also going down, but this time by 4,000. And then assuming that your textbook uses that income summary account for closing entries, that would be $10,000 to income summary. All right, let's get a little bit more complicated here. Now we have salary allowances, 10% on original investments, and then the remainder according to a three to one ratio. So this one's a lot of fun. So first, let's deal, deal with those salary allowances of 10,000 and 8,000. So we've allocated so far $18,000. Next, let's deal with that 10% on original investments, which again was 10% of 50,000 and 70,000 respectively. That's a total of 12,000. And now that we've dealt with all of our easy ones, now let's deal with the remainder. So again, we needed to allocate a negative 10,000. However, we brought this down even further. We allocated 18,000 and 12,000. So right now we're actually dealing with a remainder of negative 40,000. Don't let this throw you off. Follow those steps. Because even though it seems like we shouldn't be going more negative, we need to. Because unless we do this, we're not going to equal out at the very end. So 40000 here is going to be allocated according to a 3 to 1 ratio. So this remainder has four parts, essentially. Now Garcia is going to get three of those four parts, three-fourths. And Harris is going to get one of those four parts, one-fourth. So what we're going to see here is that Garcia, and I'll put these fractions in parentheses to kind of set them apart, is going to get three of the total of four parts. So three-fourths times negative 40,000 means that Garcia is going to absorb 30,000 negative. And Harris is going to absorb one-fourth of that $40,000 remainder. 
so negative 10,000. So let's do our final math just to make sure that everything equals out. For, for Garcia, we have 10,000 plus 5,000 minus 30,000. So Garcia is going to be absorbing $15,000, while Harris, on the other hand, actually is ending up with an increase. And when we check our work, $15,000 negative plus $5,000 positive still equals out to that $10,000 negative net loss. So now that we have something a little different, now let's uh, kind of play with that journal entry a bit. Now Garcia, is his capital going up or down? Well, in this case, it is going down. So we have to debit Garcia's capital to make it go down. Don't forget those foundations that you learned at the beginning of accounting. Now Harris's capital, is Harris's capital going up or down? Harris's capital is going up, it's a positive number, which means that we have to credit Harris's capital by that 5,000. And we still have a net loss, so income summary is going to be credited for 10,000. Now do we still equal out? Yes, 15,000 equals 15,000. Now we have one more just for fun. We have salary allowances in E for 40,000 for Garcia and 10,000 for Harris. So we have allocated a total of 50,000, which in this case means that we have negative 10,000 minus 50,000, a negative $60,000 remainder. I know, this is huge, right? So this 60,000 is going to be divided equally according to E. So 60,000 or negative 60,000 divided by two means that Garcia is going to take on 30,000 of that loss or that negative remainder. And Harris is going to take on 30,000 of that negative remainder. Now, so last but not least, we have Garcia. That is actually going to, now him, be positive, $10,000 increase, while Harris is going to absorb a $20,000 decrease. You should have actually put that one just for fun. And still, if we take a 10,000 positive and a 20,000 negative, we still end up with 10,000 negative. So now let's go through those same exact steps as we did before for that journal entry. In scenario E, Garcia's capital is actually going up. Now remember, how do we make capital go up? By crediting it. So what we need to do here, since debits come first, we're going to hold off on Garcia's capital credit. Let's move on to Harris. Harris's capital is actually going down by 20,000. So ask yourself that same question. How do we make capital go down now? Well, capital decreases with a debit, so we can actually start off with Harris Capital. Remember, always and forever, debits come first. And then we can start dealing with our credits. Garcia is going up by 10,000, and we have income summary for 10,000, and we still equal. So this was a, a little bit of a trickier scenario that you might come in contact with. A lot of times we don't have a whole bunch of these, but it's still nice to kind of see them and logically think through them and really bring your understanding of these income allocation problems to the next level. And also your journal entries to really make sure that you understand how those debits and credits are working. Remember, all in all, everything still has to equal out. We have to remember that capital increases with a credit and decreases with a debit. Please make sure to go back through those old accounting cycle videos if you're still struggling with that a little bit. Well, other than that, that is pretty much um, probably some of the harder parts of income allocation for partnerships. If you have any questions, please feel free to leave it in the comments below. And other than that, happy studying. It's been a pleasure.